Hey everybody and welcome to part 6 of the Minecrafter's Guide to Industrial Craft 2 Experimental. In this episode we're going to talk about the Tesla Coil, Terraformers, and Teleporters. Alright, before we get started, I just want to mention two things. First of all, the lovely signs that I've used throughout this tutorial are advanced information panels from the Nuclear Control Mod, along with their advanced panel extenders. Uh, we do have a tutorial out on them and how to use them and all of their intricacies, and you can check that out on, on our channel. Um, second, Uranium-235, which I stated in the last episode that I wasn't sure what it was used for, actually did find a use um, so far in this build that you can place it inside the GUI of a nuke, 2907 which um, we have not talked about yet. So uh, somebody mentioned that in the uh, comments of the last video, said it was used for uh, explosives and stuff like that. So whipped out a nuke and put it inside, and sure enough, it worked. All right, let's get into these Tesla coils. They're pretty cool. They have a 5,000 uh, EU internal buffer, and you can uh, provide them power via cable with an MFE or a bat box. Um, I think anything else, it will explode. Um, or any higher power tier, it will explode. And what this does, it will... Um, emit a blast or emit, a, emit an electrical charge of uh, EU up to four blocks away in every direction and it will need a redstone signal to emit that blast. So if I go ahead and change it to easy mode here and uh, I have a Tesla coil in the middle here and this one will actually hit anything on that fence as well but just to show you um, what this does I have a redstone signal applied, I have it fed energy from the bottom, and I'm going to stand on this, and it is going to zap all these guys into oblivion. Okay, so it's a pretty cool block. You're going to have to be careful with it um, to make sure that you don't blow yourself up with it, because that is entirely possible. Um, but again, just need a redstone signal applied to it, uh, and it will steadily consume 2 EU per tick if you um, leave it on. I believe you can uh, flip it off, um, or if you just invert your signal, you can just have it off all the time, unless somebody steps on it with a pressure plate just like this that you can hide a tesla coil underneath um, your doorstep to blow anybody up that tries to walk through it. It is a pretty devastating blast, especially the first blast when it's charged up. Or you can uh, put this shrouded pressure plate, and you can see at the top of my screen there, there is a pressure plate here that's very hard to see, um, even in the middle of the day. And you can hide them in walls because the blast will travel through walls. It does not discriminate. If there's anything in its way or any blocks blocking it, it will go right through them and it will nail everything in a big circular pattern around the Tesla coil. So that's what that is there. All right, the next block we're gonna talk about is a terraformer. And this is actually a really cool block, possibly underused, possibly doesn't have very many uses to begin with, but it is a cool block nonetheless. Um, you can make the terraformer by uh, combining an advanced machine casing with, with a TFBP, and that stands for terraformer blueprint. And you can uh, put some glowstone and some dirt and it'll get yourself a terraformer. Um, you can see that it takes 512 EU per tick maximum and it will take an absolutely unlimited amount of EU, just like the mass fabricator, which we have not talked about. You're going to have to go ahead and hook this up with some kind of cabling. I just have it hooked up with um, some uh, copper cable here. Um, you're going to have to use the appropriate type of wire, and if you're not sure what kind of wire you need to use, you can check out uh, one of the earlier episodes of this series to find out how wires and uh, power transportation works. Um, but this Terraformer blueprint here is an empty one here. It's basically, um, these are the programs that the Terraformer takes, um, and it will basically terraform or um, reform your terrain, if you want to put it in uh, planar language, uh, depending on what type of uh, TFBP that you're using. So there's a desertification. It's not desertification, I don't think, because it doesn't turn your biome into ice cream. Um, chilling will turn your biome into ice cream. Um, we can see the devastating effects of that in the background there. Um, desertification will... Uh, make it so it turns uh, simulates a desert biome and it will replace dirt with sand it'll destroy your plants it will cause fires um, and it will melt ice and snow the chilling blueprint will basically simulate a snow biome um, I don't think this works for if you want to terraform a biome for like bees and stuff I'm pretty sure it doesn't doesn't do that if it did it'd be awesome and if it does somebody can drop that in the comments below um, uh, the chilling blueprint will, will replace snow with um, will replace like water with ice and it will freeze everything and create lots of snow like you can see in the background there. Uh, mushroom will just change it to a mushroom biome basically. It will grow all sorts of uh, mushrooms and um, make a disaster which we'll see in a second. Uh, flatification will basically 
um, flatten out everything that is uh, one block above the terraformer. So if you have a big area that you need to clear out, it will uh, flatten that out very nicely for you. Um, it will not, uh, excuse me, it will not, okay, if I can say this right, it won't remove stone. I was getting ahead of myself here. Um, this one takes uh, a little bit more EU per tick than the others. It actually takes 40 EU per tick. These all have varying amounts of uh, power requirements here. Um, the irrigation, uh, what does this thing do? Um, it replaces um, sand with dirt, and it will grow all kinds of grass on top of the dirt. And sometimes it will spawn water underneath the uh, terraform, and all, it will also cause uh, plants to grow faster. And uh, that one takes, I think, 8 EU per tick. That one's pretty useful. We'll look at that. We'll actually look at all of them, I think, um, except for flat flatification. And uh, cultivation is pretty cool. It will spawn uh, trees and grass and uh, all kinds of good things. It will basically simulate a plains biome, and that will take about 20 EU per tick to make it work. Okay, so I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to go ahead and look at this uh, this teleport. I'm going to teleport up here, and you can kind of see um, I'm on top of my little base here. You can see the devastating effects that these things have, especially when you provide them with a lot of power. Now, what I found was is that the the lower tiers of power will produce less results. So um, these are terraformers, and this is the uh, the chilling terraformer, which has just caused an absolute disaster. Um, I have this hooked up to an MFSU. It's being fed a ton of power, and I've just kind of left it going. And you can see here and there, there's blocks still filling in. So I would imagine this is going to create a gigantic block of snow. Um, over here, we have the cultivation. And uh, you can see how this can be extremely useful because it will just create forest. Um, an infinite amount of dyes. It will spawn pumpkins underneath there. You can see them if I can even get through here. Um, you can see what this does down below. It's uh, it's pretty wild. So let me get out of this mess here. Um, that's the cultivation. The uh, the mushroom program here um, does some things that I don't think it's actually supposed to do because it's just growing mushrooms on mushrooms on mushrooms and I'm afraid to see how high that will actually go. I don't know if it'll go any higher, but um, that is the mushroom biome. And uh, oh, I've got something forming over there. Um, over here is the cultivation or irrigation. Okay, let me grab this. Let me grab some seeds. Didn't grab either of them. And I will show you that if I go ahead and plant some seeds here. You see one already grew over there, so you know where I'm going with this, basically. And I'm going to just replant all these things. And it will consume a um, decent amount of EU per tick. And it will make things grow instantly sometimes. So uh, that's the irrigation thing. And it's supposed to make these grow taller than uh, than three blocks high. I think it will go four blocks high. The um, issue is here that I have this only hooked up to a bat box. So the range is very small. And I think that's the reason. But it's supposed to make sugar cane grow um, more than four blocks high. Okay. So I got my teleporter here. We are about to find out how teleporters work because they are super awesome. So uh, that's the terraformers. All right, next we have the teleporter. And the teleporter um, perhaps is a very underused block, uh, maybe because of mods like dimensional doors and stargates and stuff like that. There's just a lot of options for uh, for this type of transportation. And this is maybe one of the uh, least efficient ways to move around wirelessly, kind of. Um, but they are very cool, so I'll show you how to make them. You are going to need a frequency transmitter. Actually, you're going to need a couple of these um, because you're going to need to uh, link the frequencies of the different transporters to uh, assign where it will take you to. Some advanced circuits, an advanced machine casing, and a diamond or an industrial diamond. And that will get you a teleporter. Um, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to place your teleporter, and you're going to have to place a, uh, a power storage unit directly adjacent to the teleporter. You see I have some glass fiber cable over here. It will actually not connect directly to that, so it needs to be hooked directly up to an MFSU, and that's basically because it's going to absorb a large chunk of power at one time, and uh, since this cable has a very limited amount of energy that it can flow through it, even though this uh, glass fiber cable is very high at over 8,000, it could possibly consume more power than 8,000 to transport you, and it's very likely that it definitely will um, use more than that. Um, what you need to do to operate this teleporter is you either need to provide it with a redstone signal via a lever or something like that, or you can um, use a button. And basically what you saw me do before was I, I have this charged, so I have a fully charged uh, MFSU hooked up to my teleporter. 
and I have this teleporter linked to the one up there in the roof and I simply have to click the button and it's going to uh, transport me up there. Now you can also have uh, your teleporter con constantly running which it will create a uh, little blue uh, graphic like that and I have this one hooked up to the irrigation um, terraformer down there and you just simply have to walk through it and it will port you right over to there. Um, one mistake I did make early on and I just wasn't even thinking is that I put um, two teleporters and they were both turned on all the time and it basically just warped me between the two infinitely and I had to use a teleport command to get myself out of it. So don't ever link two teleporters together and have them both on at the same time. You will have big problems and you'll need an OP to either fix yourself or you'll need to use a teleport command. All right, um, let's go ahead and make a couple of these. Let's link them up and I'll show you how they work. I'm going to drop a teleporter here on top of a fully, fully powered up MFSU and I'm going to drop another one here. And then you're going to need your frequency transmitter. You're going to want to right click on your teleporter and it's going to say that uh, the frequency transmitter has been linked to the teleporter. And then simply right click the teleporter that you want it to take you to. And it will say that the link has been established. Now you really won't need this anymore. So I'll just put this down here. And basically what you can do is you can turn this one on and it's just going to teleport me right over to the other side. Now I am not going to flip this lever because I will get stuck in that loop. But that's basically what it does. And you can see how much energy that that actually consumed um, when it shot me over there. So it's a really healthy amount of, of energy that it sucks up. Okay, So it's going to get lower and lower and lower. And if I was to go ahead and grab, let's say, a bunch of stacks of stuff, it is going to consume more power. Because the more things that you have in your inventory, um, the more power it's going to take to move you from place to place, which is fairly realistic but unfortunate. Um, and it's going to consume a little bit more power as it moves you from place to place. Now, that is not the only factor. Your inventory is not the only factor that determines how much power this uses. Um, the power is more closely... Um, um, consumed based on the distance that you are going to travel. So for instance from here to there with a full inventory would consume very much more um, EU per uh, per shot or per lump um, than it does for me to take me from here to here. So you just have to watch out um, based on your distance and uh, if you are afraid that you're going to consume way too much e EU going from place to place you could possibly um, have a button hooked up to let's say this one here and have a lever hooked up to this one here which will send you to the next one if that's even possible maybe somebody should try that and it will basically just launch you through a wormhole of teleporters until you get to where you want to go um, so that is the teleporter some pretty cool blocks we got the terraformer we got the tesla coil um, and you can see again this rampant devastation that this type of thing uh, reaps upon your world and I know somebody is going to ask the question and I did use them and I always get carried away with them um, these are carpenter blocks these slanted blocks I'll do a tutorial on them um, at some point um, they are very cool they're my best friend ever and uh, thank you to whoever introduced me to them I forget the actual person if you haven't checked out um, any of the other uh, tutorials in this series um, there are a lot of them maybe some unique things that you um, never knew existed um, that would be great Thank you very much uh, for all of our subscribers because we actually surpassed the 10,000 subscriber mark since the last video was released. So uh, awesome progress. We're actually almost at 11,000 subscribers already, which is fantastic news. And uh, we thank you for it. Um, as a reminder to everybody, we do have a website. We have a Facebook um, account, and uh, that will all be linked right here. Remember to check us out. Hit us up on our live chat IRC. And as always, everybody, stay poised.